Okay, so here's what they'll look like in the woods. First of all, they are typically very straight. As straight as like an arrow shaft, right? And very, very limb free for a long, long distance. They're a very, very well formed tree. These ones that are out in the open, you know, develop branches. Uh, you know, some of you guys that are in another class, some of these are epiformic branches on that tree when they clear it around. If they clear it around this one, it would branch out. Second thing, the form is unique. Second, look at this bark. It's a ridged, when we say ridged and furrowed like ashes, this is a ridged and furrowed. If you come up and feel it, there's another one right behind you there. The ridge tops are flat, like they were shaved down. They don't turn into a sharp peak, they're flat. And in the furrows, it's all a light gray color. It's very, very peculiar, isn't it? Very, very 20-foot you know, one. Uh, they manufacture those, and they're it's not. A lot of times, people think particle boards, you know, that junky crap. This is not. This is good stuff. I mean, it's mixed with really strong uh, resins, and it's super, super good floor system. Uh, they use it for internal parts of furniture, like you might have oak fronts, but then you open it up. The sides might be yellow poplar, or the back corner braces under tables or in drawers it might be yellow poplar places where you don't really see it so it's it's pretty strong for its weight and then in the old days they would cut trees down of course use the logs for building right they would even through shingles and there were yellow poplar shingles because of course bark's waterproof bark doesn't decompose very fast and its whole point is to protect the tree so it's actually a pretty good material. So that you can, if you ever have this goal of you know getting off the grid and building a little house in Floyd County or something, think of yellow poplar shingles. If you can get a tree like that and get a lot of shingles out, of it. all you got to do is stack them and press them. It's sort of flat, and that's easy. And, uh, use them. That's good waterproof material. Okay. So short list on that. Sure, the leaf then that's going to fall off. Duckbill bud. That's that's my number one thing. Alternate duckbill bud. Big tall one like this, that bark won't let you down. Like fruits could. The tree better have bark. <laughs> or, or it's dead. So the bark will never let you down. That's that's really indicative. Form as well. Look at the ones back in there. Look at that big fat straight one there. That's just typically how they grow. Very, very nice like that. <clears throat> Oh, that's this one. That's Virginia.
Here's what they'll look like in the woods. First of all, they are typically very straight, as straight as like an arrow shaft, right? And very, very limb free for a long, long distance. They're a very, very well formed tree. These ones that are out in the open, you know, develop branches. Second, look at this bark. It's a ridged, when we say ridged and furrowed like ashes, this is a ridged and furrowed. If you come up and feel it, there's another one right behind you there. The ridge tops are flat, like they were shaved down. They don't turn into a sharp peak, they're flat. And in the furrows, it's all a light gray color. It's very, very peculiar.